Hello all my crafty people out there. I hope y'all are ready for the next project. I've gotten some really good responses and ideas and comments uh, regarding the scarf to wrap video. So I picked up a couple more scarves. They're the average like around 45 by 60 or something roughly in that area. So it gives you a lot of fabric to work with. And today I thought, you know what? I really just want some casual knock around the house pants, but I can wear them up to Walmart if I need to kind of thing. And so I found, everybody ready? It's, it's colorful. I found this beautiful yellow batik hand dyed scarf. And I just, I think it's gorgeous. Um, it's got the little fringe on the end. And it's, it's like that size I was talking about the, um, the about 60 by 45, somewhere around there. And I think you already saw that it was $2.99 at Goodwill. So got it for a good price. And I think there's plenty of fabric here to make a pair of pants. I say that I can make a pair of pants for my short self. I have another scarf that's another batik and it's in this beautiful purple tone, uh, really bright purple. And I thought what I would do for it is turn it the other way to make pants. We'll, we'll work on that later. But for right now, what my decision has been or what I've decided to do, let me take my, my 299 sticker off because I don't need that. I ironed the fabric, but it's rayon, so it tends to just wrinkle right up, but we'll see how it goes. What I thought I would do is I have folded it in half longwise, and then I'm going to fold it in half from the shorter edge, the 45. And you end up with a nice big rectangle like this. I think what I'm going to do, I want the fringe to be at the bottom of my pants. And I also want this salvage side that is uh, not needed to be hemmed. You know how I love about, love that. Um, I want this to be open up to right around like the bottom of what I would usually wear for a pair of shorts, you know, somewhere in this range. So, so I want this part of the leg on the side to be closed up and then the rest of it to be open. I thought that would be a nice summery, flowy kind of look. And I've debated back and forth for the crotch line. I, you know, I've seen it done a thousand different ways or it feels like it, but your two basic options are to cut these, this piece of paper, this piece of paper, this piece of fabric in four pieces so you have two front and two back pieces or you can do the cut of the crotch and then sew them together leg and side leg um, and I think that's the way I'm going to do it because I don't want a center seam in the middle um, an, an inseam I guess you should say I don't want an inseam if I can avoid it because it's one more seam I don't want to deal with so what I'm going to do, and this all sounds very confusing, I'm sorry, but again, I have folded it in half from the long side and in half from the short side, so it's doubled up. I'm going to cut a crotch area here on all the folded sides, and then we're going to do that insertion process where I will sew the legs together, one inserted the other inside the other, and do it all at once. It, it sounds complicated, but it'll come out clean, I, I promise. The thing I need to do, though, is cut this up here. I need to cut this fold off so I at least have two pieces, two pieces instead of one big piece. Now, in order to determine what size I want to use for that cut, in to, to make the crotch I have you know I wish there was a better word for that but anyway 
if you remember or if you've seen it, I did a video on some, these are kind of like, a, these are wrap pants and it was made with a polka dotted mid-century modern kind of print, uh, a flat sheet that I had purchased at Goodwill. So I'm not going to do a wrap pair of pants, but the crotch was was the only real piece that was to this pattern that you had to, to measure. So here's my roundabout way of doing it. I wore a pair of pants yesterday that I really liked. They're just a pair of white linen pants. And I have seen people use the crotch line on a pair of pants they like to determine a cutout for a pair on, on ones they're making themselves. So I'm going to take this pair of comfy pants that I already know I like to wear. This is the crotch cutout from that other pattern. And I found that when I made that pattern, this was a very long crotch line. It was too, it was too long for me. Uh, and I have a short torso, so I don't need this much. So what I did is I folded it in half. And I lined it up with this crotch line that I know I like. And I took this line here that would have been another seam line and I put it right underneath the fabric, the, the line of the pants, the crotch line. So it would, I'd know I had a seam allowance. And that's a, that's a little more than a, a half inch. So I've, I've got plenty of seam allowance. And I'm just trying to get a rough idea of how much of this cutout I would need because um, it was too long in the other pants. So I know that this is about where my waistline is, give or take this inch uh, where the front and the back are a little different. So even if I went to this line where the back is and I determined that that's the line I want my waist line to be at, I'm just going to draw a rough line across this pattern piece and that's about where I want my waistline to be and of course like I said I'm already taking into account a seam allowance by putting that seam allowance right underneath the the fabric so now I know this is the crotch line I'm going to cut and I'm going to take it and fold it over I'm going to get the white pants out of the way because that's not helping our vision so now we've got the line drawn like this, and I want to make a casing for some elastic. So I'm going to fold this over, and I'm going to think, okay, well, how much casing do I need? And if I use a one-inch piece of elastic, that should be plenty of casing right there, say one and a half at the most. So... If I take that back open it, I'm going to take and go one and a half up from that line that I want for it to be my waistline, the top of my waistline. I'm going to create a casing by adding one and a half inches up here so that when I fold that fabric over, I will have a nice size case for some one inch elastic. And yeah, I'm mean, going to use one inch elastic. It's just comfy and easy to make, I mean, easy to use. It's going to use a little bit of my fabric, but I'm not planning to have these P pants that fall all the way to the floor because of the fringe. I kind of want to hit around ankle so the fringe falls over my ankles. And that will work fine for this length for me. Again, I'm, I'm short. So unless you get a bigger scarf, uh, if you're tall or even even average, this might be a little short on you, but I have another idea to do with the purple where I'm going to use the length differently and we'll be able to accommodate that. So I'll probably do a second video for that. So again, this is the crotch seam I used for the wrap pants. I figured out where the waistline is that I want to use for these pants and I added one and a half inches to make my casing for my elastic. So 
I'm going to get to cutting. Let me lay this out and I'll get back with y'all and show you how we're going to cut the scarf up to make these pants. Okay, everybody. This is a little tricky. And the reason I say that is because this is, it's rayon. It's flimsy. It's, it doesn't want to stay in place. So it makes it a little tricky to get this line. Yeah, yeah we're going with straight. So what I did to get it as lined up as, as even as possible is I took my good old handy dandy quilt clips and I clipped the fold the, the fringed end down here to make sure that they stayed lined up. So when I tugged and pulled and tried to line things up, that they were at least kind of like my barrier, my maybe my anchor, that's what I'm thinking, that they would be straight. So what I've done is I've put it on this line this is this just happens to be my 10 inch line and I've put the fabric a quarter inch over that line and I'm going to use my good old quilting ruler here to cut this all at once with the rotary cutter that way I'm feeling pretty good I'll, I'll get a nice even cut and all I'm cutting off is the fold at the top where I've folded them lengthwise and shortwise to make the four pieces of fabric essentially but we're only cutting this top fold to create two wide pieces of fabric so I've got my ruler lined up on my 10 and then what this will do is this will create two pieces of, pa of fabric it's got so I've got the two pieces of fabric and they're just folded in half now this I said this this um, salvage side will be the side of the pants that you see outside the outside seam and then my fold here is where I'm going to put that crotch line in and again the crotch line I'm leaving it folded in half. That's fine for me because I'm just going to slip it on. Actually, I'm not going to slip it on. I just need to find where my line is. And of course, it's on the other side. So. I'm just going to fold it real quick. So I can draw it. On the other side so I got a, a rough idea of where and then I've got to draw my one and a half inch line for the casing and that's gonna be right so if I line it up excuse the old ruler one and a half inches here. Now, now I've got the one and a half inch casing top. This is where my actual waistline will be when I fold that casing over. And I'm just gonna line it up here on the edge of the folds. And I'm gonna do a quick pin. I finally followed my own advice and put a little uh, magnetic pin cushion on both my sewing table and my cutting table. I don't know how many years that's taught me to figure out. But that's okay. Better to have done it than not. And this is, I, again, flimsy fabric, so I'm not too terribly concerned about meeting the edge perfectly. But that'll give me where I need to cut. So We've already cut the, t the big piece in two. Now we're gonna cut the crotch line out of the middle where the folds are. All right. 
now we've cut the crotch line out. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take all these pins off, these uh, clips off, and we're going to go to the sewing machine. Actually, I'm going to the serger. I'm going to serge this pretty much the whole project, I think. I may sew the side seams. So what we're, there's not a, there's not a right and a wrong on this batik. It's beautiful double-sided fabric. Uh, the, I, there's no, you can't see anything between the turtles that are different on one side or the other. So I can sew this exactly the way it is. I don't even have to worry about turning it to another side. Now, if it was, if it was specific, you know, if it had a front and a back that was very easy to tell, you would want the the fabrics facing each other, right sides together or wrong sides together. Actually, you want them right sides together when you sew this. Uh, so you would insert, you would turn one leg inside out and, and insert it into the other one, or right side out, I should say. So let's go over to the serger, sew the seam, and then we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew our side. You know, I did think about putting pockets in this, y'all. But I don't think I've got enough fabric to uh, make pockets out of this. I could put one pocket in it, but no, that would just drive me crazy. So let's go over to the serger, get this serged, then we'll sew the side seam, and I will try on the pants for y'all. Okay, here we are at our handy dandy serger. We're going to seam the crotch line, and it's this big U. It looks huge. So once we seam this, then we'll be able to fold the, the legs over and meet them on the sides. So let's get going. Again, this is flimsy fabric, so enjoy if you use this kind of scarf. Honestly, it's, it's, it's just not it's not bad, but sorry, trying to find my foot pedal. Hello, there it is. Can't surge without it. I'm not really taking any fabric off. I'm just making sure that they meet the side, the edges. Don't want to miss uh, the seams on the edges to go. We'll do. We'll turn them together like this. That ends up being yeah, the same on this side. Doesn't matter which side it comes on. There's hard to see, but that's this the center seam or crotch seam, and then we're just gonna seam these sides over here, leave this open down towards the bottom so that it'll just kind of flare and make our top casing. I'm gonna go ahead and run a serge line across the top where we're going to fold it over for our casing, and that will just make it secure. I won't have to do any kind of special quarter inch hem or anything like that or fold over. So once I'm done that, and like I said, I'm just going across the top. 
Um, once I've done that, we'll go over to the machine and do our casing and our sides, search, um, sew up our sides. See you there. All right, what I've done is I've gone and measured some shorts that I like to wear as far as what I want the side seam to be. It's kind of hard to see my pins, but I've pinned, this is, these are both the sides of the pants that are gonna be on the, my side seam. And I've pinned them down to the point where I want to sew. Now, the good thing about this particular process, I sew it, I try them on, I want a little more coverage, I just sew down some more. So, and of course, if, if for some reason it was the opposite where I was like, oh, that's too much, then I can, you know, take the seam out. It's, it's a real simple process. So I have lined up the tops that I surged over to make sure I can just fold them over to make my casing. And I've gone down, picked out where I want to stop my seam to leave the legs open at the bottom. And we're gonna side seam both of these. And then we're gonna work on the casing at the top for our elastic. Cause I want these to be comfy. All right, I'm gonna start this one and we'll get through this side and then I'll let you rest from the sewing machine and we'll go back and start again when we're doing the casing. I'm just gonna start up here at the top and catch all of my little crazy seams. Now, I'm not too terribly worried about uh, uh, what my seam allowance is on this. So I'm gonna place my fabric, the edge of my fabric, which is the serge side. Oh, there's a little mark on my machine that says 5 8 inch. That's what I'm gonna go with. I think that should be fine. All I really wanna do is create a seam that I can open and probably sew on the other side for security. You know, sew it open. So, actually, you know what? For that matter, I'm gonna put the fabric right up against the foot. It'll, it'll give me plenty of room. And I've got my needle in the center position. All right, this is flimsy fabric, so be ready for it to buckle a little. The good part is this is the, the uh, salvage side of the fabric, so it's it's not fraying or anything crazy like that, making a mess. And I am sewing this right sides together, or at least what we've defined as right sides by putting the crotch line in, so this is, um, is not going to be a seam you see outside. Just a little bit more. Keep your fabric lined up on the edges. And when I get down here to my last pin, I'm going to go to that pin. I'm going to do some back stitching and do some more back stitching. Because remember, this is this particular little part of your seam is going to get some activity. It's going to be open on the side of your leg. So let's cut that. And now what we've got, it looks wide, it's huge, because we're gonna put elastic in it. And it, it, it may end up being too big. I may have to cut the sides. But this is your crotch line. That's your top that we're gonna put the casing in and make it nice and full with elastic. And then this is over here is the side seam that we just put in for the amount that I want at the top to be closed up. I'm gonna do that to the same, the same thing to the other side and then you and I'll get back together when we're doing the elastic casing. Okay I ran into a little snag with the elastic. Nothing wrong with making the casing, that's fine, but apparently I used all my one inch elastic for my grandson's pants, his shorts. So I have all these little scrap pieces of elastic and I'm a saver, not a waster, so we're going to do a joining method. I'm taking some of the scrap um, pieces uh, that we cut off the top of the scarf when we cut them in two, and I'm going to put the two pieces of elastic 
on top of that little scrap and I'm going to join them and I'm going to put them directly under my foot and I'm going to use a nice zigzag to go over that and I'm going to cut that make sure I caught it and I did it's well joined so then I'm just going to fold over the other piece of fabric the other side of it kind of making like a little sandwich just to make sure it's nice and secure and I'm going to go over it one more time again with a zigzag and that how I'm going to make a longer piece of elastic to uh, put in my casing. I'm just cutting off. It doesn't matter if it ravels. It's going to be inside the uh, casing. So it's not going to be a problem. So now I have a nice long piece of one inch elastic. More than I need, but the two pieces weren't enough. So now I have plenty. I'm going to measure that real quick. I just wanted to show you, again, how you can scrap together some elastic. I had three pieces, put the fabric underneath, the two joined pieces did a zigzag, and then I fold the fabric over just to give it a nice covering. And it's also a great way to join your fabric, I mean your elastic, when you're doing a, a casing in a waistband or something at your elastic in your waistband, because it doesn't create the bulk that your typical fold over process does. Most people will take elastic and fold it over the top of itself and zigzag, but that creates kind of a bulky seam. So we're going to join this one. I'm going to try to join this one in the same way when we finished. Sometimes I'll sew one edge underneath the casing and then kind of butt this one up and sew and avoid the same bulky uh, joining but we're gonna give it a try don't need any extra bulk let me go measure this to make sure I've got the piece I need for my waist and then then we'll do the casing sorry I just had my elastic emergency all right I took this over to the iron and just pressed over the one and a half inches that we had taken into account to make the casing for the inch wide elastic that I had to create from several pieces because I didn't have it on hand. You can always do that though and that's a neat little handy option and it also saves on elastic because I never seem to have a whole piece when I need it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this, I took my the base off my machine, it's easier this way to run this under here and I'm going to run my needle right into the serge line because I just want to make sure I catch everything but at the same time I want to make sure I change my stitch back to my straight stitch again I'm going to and I'm going to leave the opening at one of the center seams you can leave your opening anywhere I just always do that for some reason so now I'm going to back stitch because I really want that nice and secure when I go to push that elastic in when you press your fold over for your casing like this or a hem or anything like that it just makes it a lot faster granted I gotta get the iron out and ironing board and all that lovely stuff I do have a little pressing board that my husband made me for quilting, and I can use that too, but this is a lot of fabric to put over that, so I just broke out the old ironing board. And this is a lot of fabric in this waistline because I used the full width of the, the scarf, so it's going to be quite gathered. Let's see how it turns out. I never know until we're done. Right, 
This is going to take a few seconds, so I will get back with y'all as soon as we are running the elastic through the casing and finishing up our pants. All right, we're going to use our good old safety pin method where we fold our elastic down on the end here, insert a hefty size safety pin, the biggest one I've got right now. Find that opening we left on the casing, and we're going to start pushing through. And there is a lot of fabric here, so this is going to be a very full gather. So I'm thinking it might end up looking kind of like genie pants. <laughs> we'll see. You never know. Okay, there it goes. I'm trying to get that where I thought it went. I'm trying to get the elastic to get started. There we go. Sounds like it's ripping, but it's just the ridges and the elastic that are pulling through. If they don't come out to what I want, I still got them to wear around the house. I can go feed the chickens in them. I love this color. The purple ones, though, I think we're going to make it a different way to accommodate a longer leg, which I do not have. That's just a little seam. Again, we're just, I know y'all don't really see it, but I take that pen, which actually you can actually see through the fabric, and I just push as much fabric on it as I can, and then I pull, of course. Don't forget to hold on to the end of your elastic. Well, I would say you're gonna have to start all over again. All right, this is a lot of fabric. <laughs> Not sure if you want to see me run this whole casing. So, push, 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 push as much as you can on there and pull it. Push, push, push. All right. I will get back with y'all when we are joining the elastic and then we'll try them on. Or I'll try them on. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I got the elastic in the casing. I just wanted to show y'all something though. This is the seam, the crotch seam, and you can see how threadbare that is now. And it's just for me pushing that elastic in and out. It's the type of fabric. Rayon is, is not super durable. So what I'm going to do is when I join this elastic, I am going to zigzag over that threadbare area to kind of join those two fabric pieces a little better and that should keep it from uh, from fraying or, or coming apart or anything like that. I don't think it's going to come apart but I just want to make sure it's secure because you see I don't know if you can see it's just a little frayed or threadbare I guess. So I've got the elastic pulled and I've got this end here and you know what, I may, I may overlap them just so I have a bulky piece behind that seam that I'm worried about coming apart. It won't be terribly bulky, but it'll be a little more secure than it um, not having something behind it. So let me sew that up and we're gonna put a zigzag over that just to make sure. Put it down here. It's a little thick because it doesn't like the elastic. I'm actually, instead of back stitching, I'm going to turn it around, come over it again, and make sure it's really secure. Come on, there she goes. Now I'm going to backstitch. Let's see what we got. Hopefully I caught both sides. If I didn't, I can. Yeah. So what I did is I zigzagged over the elastic joining 
which I wasn't planning to because it's a little bulky, but I was worried about that seam where those, uh, where I put a lot of tension putting the elastic into the casing. So we are good. The only thing I'm going to do is, is sew up. Actually, I'm not even going to worry about sewing that up. It was so little a hole. Oh, no, I'll sew it up. Let me get this. Just make sure we catch everything. And this is just the opening I had in the casing that I'm securing. Now it's secure. And I got all these pennants that I'm going to cut off. I'm going to cut those off, make sure the elastic is spread out well. These are huge. I might have to cut the elastic down. And um, I'll try them on. I think we're talking about genie pants, though, here. It's going to be funny. Okay, everybody. I think they came out pretty stinking cute. They are super comfy. Now, Grant, there's a lot of fabric here. I could have cut off some from the sides and made these legs uh, more narrow, but I'm digging it. They're kind of cute. Now, they're open up to where I would usually wear my shorts, so that makes them kind of flowy too. But I think they turned out cute. So, again, I could have reduced the crotch line but they're comfy and they're something I can wear to the beach, to the beach shop, <laughs> whatever I want. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Thanks again for all your support and uh, send me any suggestions you might have and don't forget to like and subscribe.